This is our 2023 roundup of the best video editing software for Windows. After a lot of research and a ton of testing, I'm gonna share my top recommendations, whether you're looking for free beginner-friendly options up to advanced pro-level video editors on Windows. So we've made a lot of videos on this topic over the years, but this year, this year, things are very different. So my picks for the top two video editing software right now on Windows are CapCut and DaVinci Resolve. And you can actually get both of them for free. So I'm gonna give you a rundown on both of them, but also cover why these two and what makes them so powerful. But also look at why I'm not recommending a lot of the other options anymore as well. So we'll start off first with CapCut. This is an amazing, super intuitive, really easy to use video editing tool that works on Windows, it works on Mac, it works on iOS and Android. This is actually part of what makes this so powerful in that you can use this on multiple devices and have access to the exact same features no matter what you're using. But also because they started this as a smartphone app first, they'd really honed the interface and the workflow and the usability of it so that when it's come through to desktop, it's not built from the ground up as desktop software, like traditional editing software. It's got a lot of the things brought over from the smartphone world too, which I think is absolutely amazing. It's a different way to look at editing for some of the things you're doing in there. And it's much more intuitive than a lot of the ways things were necessarily traditionally done. And this makes it a great choice for someone, even if if you've never edited a video before, you'd be able to jump in here, you'd be able to figure stuff out, start editing videos and create something pretty amazing really, really quickly. Now, as you'd expect, it supports multiple layers of video and audio, so you can create pretty complicated projects in here. They also make it really easy for you to switch between the different video formats. So maybe you start out editing a widescreen video for YouTube, with the click of a button, you can now convert that into a portrait video for YouTube Shorts, for Instagram or for TikTok. But I also love that they've included a lot more advanced stuff in here here too, things like adjustment layers. Now this is something that you'd normally only see on much more professional software, which essentially it's a blank video clip that you can use in your timeline and you can apply effects and things too and make adjustments. And then any clip that is underneath of that adjustment layer will have those things applied to it. So it's a really fast way to help you apply effects and color grades and things to a large group of clips just by adding it once to your timeline. But there's so much more in here too. Things like video stabilization, like motion tracking, like audio noise reduction, to help you remove background noise in your videos. And for color correction, there's a bunch of preset filters that you can apply to your videos, or you also have the tools in here to dial in and to tweak everything and customize it up for your look and feel. And now there's also some really cool AI features in here as well. One of them is auto captioning, where it will go through and listen to what's said in your video and it will automatically type those out for you into titles and captions that you can use in your video. And there's also an amazing background removal tool, which will cut you or the subject of your video out from the background Background so that you can get really creative with your videos without the need to go and use a green or a blue screen. So this is where I found it so hard now to keep recommending a lot of the other options, free and paid, because of what you get access to 100% for free inside of CapCut. There's even a pretty random feature in here where you type out text and it's gonna read it out for you in a human voice, or it's gonna sing it to you if you'd like that as well. Prime. Even the effects and the transitions and stuff that you find in here, they're not just the standard, really basic looking, run of the mill stuff that you find in the most basic editing tools. There's actually some really cool, really powerful ones here that will help you make your videos more creative if you use them right. Now there is a couple of things I do wanna make you aware of. The music inside of CapCut, it comes with a bunch of music. A lot of it is copyright music, meaning that if you do use it in say your YouTube videos, you're likely gonna get a copyright claim on that content. Now this is kind of a blanket rule that I have across any video editing tool or app, if there is included music, you are much better off using services like Artlist or Epidemic Sound. Those are the top two that we use and that we recommend using those services where you know that you own the rights, that you have the right license so that you're not gonna have a risk of getting a copyright claim, copyright strike, in the future. But yeah, the bulk of the music that's included here in CapCut is copyright. Now, the reason that they do include it though, is if you're using CapCut to create videos for TikTok specifically, then you can use these tracks legally in your TikToks, upload them, and you won't have a problem. And that's because CapCut is actually owned by or made by the same company that makes TikTok, ByteDance. So yes, this is a good tool if you're going to be creating TikTok videos, but you are not by any means limited to just creating TikTok videos. This is a super powerful, video editing tool for any type of video, but don't use the included music outside of TikTok. Now, while we're on that and CapCut being owned by the same company that owns TikTok and some of the privacy concerns and things going around TikTok, there are some of the same concerns
concerns that people have with CapCut 2 and maybe having some questionable stuff around privacy in their terms of service. And apparently some countries like India have already banned TikTok and CapCut as well. So this is definitely not my area of expertise, but in my experience of using it on the desktop and using it on my smartphone, it does seem to require more permissions and access and stuff on the phone. But personally for me, I really don't think it's a big deal. The fact that we're getting access to all these amazing features, this amazing tool, 100% for free, and it is absolutely amazing. And this beats out so many paid video editing tools with everything that's in here. I mean, in this kind of category before, we'd recommend stuff like Caden Live, like Shotcut, and even Filmora as a good paid option. And that's not to say that you can't still use those and get great results, but I think CapCut here has really nailed a great balance of an amazing feature set with a really easy to use interface. So it is a great option for someone, absolute beginner, right through to sort of an intermediate level. Someone who's not looking for all the super advanced, really pro features, but someone who wants to create amazing videos without spending a huge amount of time doing it. So that brings us next to DaVinci Resolve, which is another mind blowing app with what you get access to in here. Again, totally for free. There is a free version that you can use. You do need to register for free on their website to be able to download it. But this is something that for a very large percentage of people out there, you're not gonna need to jump up to the paid version, the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. The free version could be everything that you need. So DaVinci Resolve obviously works on Windows, it works on Mac, there is a Linux version as well. And there's also now an iPad version too. And you can actually move your projects between them using the DaVinci Resolve Cloud or just transferring your projects between the different devices. But the big difference here with something like CapCut is that this is literally pro grade software. This is the stuff that they're using to create Netflix shows, documentaries, Hollywood movies. This is seriously pro grade tools. Now in terms of the overall usability and the interface and the experience using it, it's not gonna be as easy to use as something like CapCut. But again, this is pro grade software, but it's also not as complicated as some of the other pro tools out there either. And one of the things I absolutely love about DaVinci Resolve is it's not just a video editing tool, a video editing suite. It is a pro motion graphics and animation tool. It is a pro audio tool and a pro color grading tool and video editing as well. And they've broken it down into what they call pages or different sections of the video creation workflow. So the first one is your media page. This is where you can access all your files, import them into your project. From there, you move on to the cut page. And this is where you can do some simple edits, cut down a bunch of footage really, really quickly, all to then jump onto the next page, which is the edit page, where you're gonna edit in much more detail. And this is where you can really get into that frame by frame accurate editing, where you get access to all of those editing tools and features and stuff. This is the main page that I use and you don't need to jump through all of them, but you do have the option to jump between them as and when you'd like. Next on from there is the Fusion page. And this is, again, its own essentially standalone app for motion graphics, for animations and titles and stuff. You could really think of this as DaVinci Resolve's answer to Adobe After Effects, but completely built into DaVinci Resolve as well. The next one is the color page. So this is everything color correction, color grading, really setting the look and feel of your videos. That's all done in here. Now, this is such a powerful tool that even people editing documentaries and movies and stuff on other platforms a lot of them will bring that content into DaVinci Resolve, into this color area and adjust all the colors and everything in here. And this is where DaVinci Resolve really started was it was an amazing color grading, color correction tool or video finishing tool, essentially. You've also got Fairlight, which is the next one across. So this is everything audio, everything sound. And again, it's another essentially full featured pro grade app. And the last one is your deliver page. This is all your export settings and how you get stuff out of Resolve. There is a lot in here and I don't want this to freak you out because you don't need to use it all. Like I said, most of my time in here is only spent on that edit page. That to me is essentially a final cut or essentially an Adobe Premiere. But you also have access to all of these other tools in here as well, as and when you need them, but you may never need them. And again, absolutely ridiculous that you're getting access to all of this for free. So on that, you can upgrade to DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is $295 as a one-time purchase. So not like Adobe Premiere, where you're on a monthly subscription or some of the others out there now too. This is a one-time purchase that you pay and you can unlock more features, but you also unlock more performance as well. Now, in terms of the system requirements, DaVinci Resolve is a bit of a beast, meaning that you're probably not gonna be able to run this or run it well on 
on an older or a lower powered computer. You will wanna have something fairly modern with a bit of power behind it to get the best out of this. So I suggest you check out their recommended computer requirements and I'll have that linked in the description below. So then comparing DaVinci Resolve to the previous winner for years in these videos, which was Adobe Premiere, which I'm still a big fan of, but it's becoming so much harder to recommend Adobe Premiere when what you're getting in DaVinci Resolve is absolutely amazing and it's free or it's a one-time purchase instead of a rolling monthly subscription. And I'm not by any means saying that Premiere is bad, but one of the biggest reasons that I loved Premiere before and what I used it for was collaborating with teams and working with remote editors. But this is now something that DaVinci Resolve does really, really well as well. So I really love the innovation, the growth, the direction. And again, it's not saying that the others aren't doing those things as well, but Resolve seems to be doing it faster. Now, if you're someone who's already ingrained in the Adobe ecosystem, maybe you've got that subscription for Photoshop or you use After Effects, then yeah, it would make sense to continue with that. It's still an amazing option. But for anyone starting today, anyone looking right now, or if I was starting again today, DaVinci Resolve, would be my top pick. So if you are a beginner, if you are someone who wants to create amazing videos really fast without needing to learn how to use professional grade software, but still wanna have access to a ton of effects and controls and stuff, then CapCut is an amazing option. But if you're someone who is looking for more advanced features and control, if you're someone who wants to learn pro grade software and have access to that full suite of tools, it's gonna to be really hard to go past DaVinci Resolve. So that's why they're my top two picks this year. Now the fastest and most effective efficient way for you to edit your videos is to follow a process. So check out the video linked on screen where I take you through our editing process to help you get the best results and the most amazing looking videos in the least amount of time. And also, if you wanna learn how to use DaVinci Resolve or CapCut, check out the links down in the description because we got those there too.